Hello and welcome to Football Manager 2020. You join me right now, I'm here in Switzerland, ready to take over the job as the manager of Grasshoppers. I'm right here now, actually, on the banks of Lake Geneva. It's a beautiful lake, it's fantastic, it's a lovely city as well, so I'm so excited to be here taking over Grasshoppers and having a great time in the city of Geneva. It's going to be fantastic. The lake is massive as well. The lake is absolutely huge. It's fantastic. So I think we're going to have a great time here. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure where the stadium is yet. So I need to have a quick look on my phone and just see where the stadium is. So let me get the maps up. Right. We are here in Geneva on the on the banks of the uh, of the of the lake here, as you can see. And um, I need to just find out where the stadium is. It's the Letzigon, Letzigon Stadium. Uh, let me just type this in. It will come, won't it, at some point if I type in Let's a, Let's a Gerd. Is that what it is? Let's a, Let's a Gerd Stadium? Let's a Gun Stadium? Stadion, perhaps? It's one of these things. There we go. There's the stadium. Let's click that in. Can't be too far. Uh, 274 kilometres away. What's that about? Have I... Am I in the wrong place? I'm. So, have I got the wrong lake? It's in Zurich. I've got the wrong lake. I've actually got the wrong lake. You, you hate, you hate to see this. You actually hate to see this. Um, well, in that case, run the intro. I'll get to the right lake. Right, now that's sorted, I'm in the right place, I'm in the boardroom. Hello and welcome to Football Manager 2020. The full game is out today, which is absolutely fantastic, and we are taking over Grasshoppers in Switzerland. It's a bit different to anything you've seen on the Tom FM channel before, but I hope you're really going to enjoy it. It's going to be a fantastic story, I think, so get involved with this one. As ever, with a new series, I'm going to put a likes target on this one. It's an ambitious one, but I would love to have 500 likes on this video Liking the video is the best thing you can do for it, especially at the start of a brand new series. So if you could all drop a like on the video, I would very, very much appreciate it. And if we can reach that 500, then we'll have to sort out a treat for you as well. So here we are. I am the new manager of Grasshoppers in Switzerland. I know what you're saying. I can hear you all in the comment section already. Tom, why on earth are you taking over Grasshoppers? I'll tell you why, and it's actually quite an interesting story. So founded in 1886, Grasshoppers are one of the oldest clubs in Switzerland. And as you can see here, from this little Swiss Super League trophy here, you can see, they've won 27 titles overall, and they are the most successful side in Swiss history. Arguably, they were most successful in the 1970s, where they got to the quarterfinals of a Champions Cup and the semifinals of the UEFA Cup, which was pretty decent. But since the turn of the century, it's not been so good for them. They've not won a title since 2003. They've not reached a group stage of a European competition since 2006. And to top it all off, last season, they got relegated for the first time since 1951. So it really is a downward spiral for Grasshoppers at the moment. That being said, though, the infrastructure is in place. We've got a 26,000 seater stadium. We've got great training facilities, great youth facilities and excellent youth recruitment. Because of this, we're going to massively focus on youth development in this save. Youth development is going to be the key aspect of this Grasshopper save. But that's not the only goal that I've got. We've got five goals to keep us going. The first goal is to get Grasshoppers back into the Swiss Super League, the top division, ideally at the first time of asking by winning the league. That has to be done this season. That's our aim. The second big aim for this series is to rebuild the squad with a big focus on youth development and get Grasshoppers back into the upper echelons of Swiss football, qualifying for European football in the process, whether that's the Champions League, the Europa League or the new Europa Conference League, which I'm sure will be entered into at some point in this save. We have to do something to get back in there. Once we've done that, hopefully we should be be able to get onto point number three which is to build a team capable of winning the Swiss Super League that's a big aim for us once we've done that we should be in a pretty decent position for step number four we can start to get far into European competitions build up Switzerland's European coefficient and in the process as the reputation of the league increases better players will come to Switzerland and sign for Swiss clubs as a result all Swiss clubs should get better and get further in continental competition. So that's one of the big indicators we need to look out for. We need to see Swiss clubs getting into the later stages of European competitions. And finally, the fifth challenge is going to be winning a Champions League and making the Swiss Domestic League the best league in Europe. That is the plan. That's the ultimate aim. It's going to be really tough but I think we can do it. To top it all off, I want to try and do it 
within 10 seasons. We can give a few seasons either way if we need to, but 10 seasons is kind of the aim. We're not just going to be building grasshoppers in this save. We're going to be building Switzerland. But let's not get carried away by winning a Champions League just yet. That is miles away. We've still got to get promoted back to the Swiss Super League for point number one first. So we need to look at the club vision first and foremost to see how we can do that. So here is the club vision. We've got two club culture objectives set by the board, and that is to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. That's a favoured importance. If we don't do that, it's not that detrimental to it if we don't do that but the board wants to see that at least and they also want to develop players using the club's youth system which makes sense they've got really good facilities and that is a desired importance so that is pretty important we need to start and focus on that early on in terms of the five-year plan though required is to work within the wage budget if we go outside of the wage budget then i think we are going to be in big big trouble now i know grasshoppers have got some financial issues we'll look at that later on but that is probably why that is there in place by the end of the first season the board are expecting us to win promotion by winning the league back to the swiss super league and that is required it's not even like desired or favored that is required so if we don't do that we could be looking for the sack at the end of the first season. They also want to see us reach the quarterfinals of the Swiss Cup as a minimum. So it's pretty pretty impressive, these targets. Like, they're not easy ones by any shot. We've got to work really hard in this first season to achieve these goals, else we could get sacked. Beyond this first season, though, the uh, the objectives are a little bit obscure. Just attempt to remain in the Super League, remain in the Super League, continue remaining in the Super League. We'll obviously adjust these as we go on when we start to improve and things like that. But this first season, obviously, winning the league is the priority for both me and the board. Now, personally, I've been inspired by the club vision, and I've set my own vision for the Tom FM channel. You've probably heard me talk about it before, but if you're not and you're new around here, please do subscribe because we are trying to get to 20,000 subscribers by January the 1st, 2020. It's ridiculously ambitious, and I'd love it if we can get close to it. I need your help to do it, though. I need you to share the video around with all your friends. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Tell your friends to watch it. Tell them to subscribe to the channel. We've also got a giveaway going on at the moment. We gave one copy of Football Manager 20 away yesterday. We've got another giveaway going on right now, and we're going to be giving that away when we reach 14,000 subscribers. When we reach 15,000 subscribers, we'll give another one away 16,000 subscribers another one away as long as we get it all before the 1st of January 2020 so the quicker we grow in subscribers the more chances you've got to chan the more chances you have of winning a copy of the game so get yourself entered in the link in the description share the video around drop a like it's all rosy so first things first I've uh, I've tried to change my manager avatar again and it's it looks perhaps even more scary this time I think I look a bit more like a serial killer in this one um, I'm just never going to be able to get these right am I but there we go that's my new picture so look forward to seeing that throughout this save so before we jump into anything else I think it's probably best first and foremost to just explain how the Swiss Challenge League works essentially 10 teams are in it and we all play each other four times to have 36 games in a season the team that finishes top of the table automatically promoted and the team that finishes second go to a promotion relegation playoff with the team that finishes ninth in the Swiss Super League because one team goes down and one team goes into that playoff. So that is what we're going to be doing. We want to be finishing top, but if we can finish top two and win that playoff, I'll be very happy as long as we get promoted this season. There are one or two things to think about, though. We can't have more than three non-EU players in the starting 11, which means that we can't be signing loads of Brazilian regens, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we can get around that, obviously. But most interestingly, 11 players in the match squad must have been trained by a club in Switzerland, which is why youth development in this save is going to be so important. We have to bring in some top quality youth players to really fund and build the squad. And talking of the squad, this is our first team, which is uh, looking pretty full at the moment. Uh, the current view that I've got right now, as you can see, it's very different to perhaps how the default one looks. It's because I'm using uh, some views, custom views made by Friday Night FM. If you search it on Steam Workshop, I think should find if you search them on twitter you'll probably find them on there as well but these are really great views uh, so we'll start off with this squad view uh, and we're going to look actually at the best players currently so these are the top three players oliver buff which is perhaps the best name i've ever seen a football player have oliver buff four star current ability he's an attacking midfielder 26 years old could be a decent valued at a million pounds as well which could be decent we might need that money but he's come in this season on a free transfer uh, playing in Cyprus last season, but being at Zaragoza before that. And has played at Zurich for a long time too. So coming back to Switzerland, hopefully he does some good stuff for us this season, Oliver Buff. If we look at potential though, I think this is where we have a lot of excitement because we've got five players in this first team with five-star potential, which I think is fantastic. This guy, Alan, he looks like he's perhaps got the best potential because he's 
come up at the top. So Allen is a right back with five star potential, three star current ability, 20 years old, no nonsense fullback and a wing back. That's really nice to see, actually. So we've got a bit of versatility there with him. He could be a great player this season. I think we can look forward to him. But we've also got a lot of players. I mean, look at the potential in a lot of these players. In fact, if we go over to uh, the play, the squad view pathway, which is another custom view that uh, Friday Night FM has made, this one sort of gives you the actual playing time. So this Oliver Buff guy is a star player. So he's got to play every single game. But if we search it by potential, you can see we've got a lot of youngsters here, so they're not going to expect to play too much football. So we can start to nurture these players. Also, they're all very, very young, I've noticed as well. In fact, if we search it by age, 33 is the oldest, and then we get to like 20. Most players are under the age of 23. That's I really like that. That that is that suits me down to the ground. This is exciting. Having a look at the development centre for younger players. Apparently there are no first team candidates right now, but we can have a look at this later on. If we quickly look into the under twenty three squad, sort it by potential again. In the under twenty three squad, we've got four players with five star potential: seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, seventeen. Like this is really good. We've got a really good young crop of players coming through. We'll explore these guys in future episodes, but. This is really exciting, having all these five-star potential players in their 18s. How's this looking? Uh, we've got two players here with five-star potential in the under 18s, which is pretty decent. So, And a lot of players with four and a half-star potential. We've got so much potential in this squad, not just to you know put them into our first team, but we can sell these players on as well. We can make so much money. Not entirely sure what Grasshoppers Club, Rappersville, J. U18 bracket 17 means. I presume this is just an affiliated club to Grasshoppers, which is like a youth club or something. If someone will let us know in the comment section, that'd be good. There's no real players in it at the moment, so maybe we'll have to wait till next season for this to fill up with real players and things like that. But I presume because it's on this squad development thing, a development centre, we actually can bring players in from this club as well. So essentially we've got two under 18 squads, which is even better. I'm so excited by this though. We've got so much potential in the squad. It's fantastic. Now, I told you we'd look at the finances, all right? I told you we'd look at the finances. So let's have a quick look at that. Uh, we've currently currently got an overall balance of minus half a million, which you hate to see. That's not brilliant. So we'll have to do something about that. Let's have a look at the projection just to see how... Oh, 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 okay, right. Um, let's... 11 million in the hole by the end of this season. And then 20 million next season, 29th. Okay, um, I, how do we quit now? How do we quit now? This is bad, obviously. This is really, really bad. We've got to do something about this. How many sponsors have we got? We've got one for half a million pounds. That's not enough, lads. We need more sponsors. We need, we need to sell some players, probably. Let's have a look at who's, who's on the most wages, then. If we search it by wages, Marco Basic is at the top, and he's on eight and a half grand a week. That's a lot of money. I I mean, is he any good? That's the thing. He's got three and a half star current ability, 31 years old, is a CDM. Have we got many CDMs? If we search it by position, in fact, if we don't do we let's not search by position. Let's go and look at the uh, squad depth and look at, I want to see, okay, if we look at position overview, we've got two great CDMs and one good CDM. So surely this means we can get rid of Basic. He's one of the greats, but we've got this other guy who is a great Sal Salatic, so I feel like he can go as well. We've got another guy, Diani, coming through perhaps. I feel like, let's have a Is he an important player though, this guy on 8K, Basic? Let's look at the hierarchy. He's only highly influential. And, and Salatic, who's the other guy in that CDM position, is the captain. So actually, we can get rid of Basic. I think Basic is the first to go because he's on 8.5K per week and we need to save that money desperately so on the first day of the job then first day of the job do we offer him out to clubs he's valued at half a million let's offer him out for half a million i mean the first day of the job we're probably going to get an angry message from him aren't we ah well no offers yet for basic but luckily he's not got cross with us yet so let's ask him to speak to clubs get your name out there and find a move well he, he's happy to see us i know you're happy to see your contract out you're on eight and a half grand a week that's why i want to get rid of you uh, i understand why you're reluctant to leave but it'd be best for your career if you go and he, he he's he doesn't want to go okay we'll, we'll try and figure out something with basic we'll try and get him to go because i am desperate to save some money also marco basic if you are watching this i am sorry it's just it's, it's nothing personal it's financial so my plan now then is to play through pre-season Pick a team that works in a formation that works and then we'll come back tomorrow for the first game of the season against this team called Will. 
or it's maybe said Vil. I don't know. I'm, you're you're going to have to tell me how to pronounce a lot of things here. I'm going to just apologise now for getting all the pronunciations wrong. You're going to have to tell me how to say it all in the comment section, and I'll get there eventually. I've not got any plans to buy players. I think we've got really good squad around us, but I am going to try and offload players like Basic on a lot of money that I'm not going to use to try and save some money for the club because... I don't want to be minus 11 million by the end of the season. Just before we finish today's video, on a personal note, I just want to say thank you ever so much for the massive reception you've given me so far in FM20. The beta save went really well. You all seem to enjoy it. So I think you're all going to really enjoy this one as well. So thank you ever so much for all your support. I really, really do appreciate it. If you can help me get to 20,000 subscribers, that would be absolutely fantastic. If we just share it around, eventually we'll get there. If everyone who subscribes to my channel right now shared it with one friend, Tomorrow, we could be on 26,000 subscribers. Like, theoretically, that's how easy it is. Obviously, a lot harder than that. But I need your help to get there. And the best way to do it is by sharing it around and telling your friends to subscribe. Also, a small little plug as well. Uh, I have got a Patreon if you're interested as well. Um, regens, we're going to be naming regens after Patreons as well. So if you're interested in that, and we should have quite a few good regens coming through in this save, get yourself over to the Patreon, have a look. And if you fancy it, you can donate. But of course, there's no obligation to donate. You don't miss out on anything. You just get access to a few little perks that you may like. So thank you very much for watching today's video. A like target of 500. That is what I've set on this video. If we can get that, we'll put some extra videos out this week for you. It'll be all good. If you're new around here, please do click subscribe as we hop to the top, which is, am I, am I really going to call this save hop to the top? I mean, it's on the thumbnail now, so I suppose I've got to call it that, but it's... It's a good name. It is a good name. I'm, it's not. It's a terrible name, Tom. It's a terrible name. Either way, I will see you tomorrow for the next episode. Have a good one. Goodbye. Goodbye.